Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Green, and with me is my wife, Dee. As we continue to work our way back, we believe the first thing to get back to is prayer. After 40 years of ministry, we know that prayer changes things. You're not alone. If you need prayer, call the MTC Christ is Center prayer line. Or submit your prayer request online, mtcfc.org. Remember, Remember, we're we're here here for for you, and and we've got your back. because without Palm Sunday, there would be no Resurrection Sunday. So yes, we are celebrating Palm Sunday today. To our visitors, good morning. Welcome, Facebook. Welcome, YouTube. Thank you for joining in. More than Conqueror's Faith family who are not in the sanctuary this morning, we say good morning and good welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We believe in expressing our praise and worship and the love for our Lord here. And we like to make a joyful noise. We like to make a joyful noise. We like lifting our hands. And we like shouting to our Lord. Feel free to praise the Lord with us. And those who are present, limit your distractions. The order of service today will include praise and worship with double portion. We will have altar call. We will have special ministry, and then we'll have a word from our youth pastors, Pastor David Smith and Minister Ashley Lodge. Lodge, not Lodge, Lodge. I know her name. That's my cousin. Um, And then the word from our pastor, the Apostle Steve Green. Um, We are providing nursery and children's church today as well. Um, We have a cry room right here to my left and to your right. So if parents, you're sitting here in the sanctuary and your angel is not feeling angelic, you can take them out in the cry room and bring them back in once they calm down and finish enjoying the service. Also, those of you all who are here in the sanctuary, please limit your walking and talking because we are a live stream televised ministry. And then remember your tithes and offerings. If you have to leave early, please make sure that you leave your tithes and offerings with the usher captain who will be in the back and the rear door. I'm pointing back there. I know people on the screen can't see where I'm pointing. Back in the back at the rear door. And then finally, I want you guys, first of all, to give God a praise. That's so cute. (laughs) That is so cute. I said, give God a praise. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Bless him, bless him, bless him. And 
And then we want to give God a praise as Minister Catrice Reese comes and reads the scripture and Minister Marquette Perry is going to lead us in prayer. Y'all be blessed today. Come on, people of God, give uh, the fruit of your lips, give Eliana praise in this house. Come on, people of God, give Eliana praise in this house. Last Sunday, Pastor, um, he was singing a song because God specialized it. And so through the whole week, it ministered in my spirit. So God took me into Jeremiah um, chapter 32, and it starts at 26 verse. And it says, then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, behold, I am the Lord. The God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for God? And then God took me to Luke 1 and, th and um, 37. And it says um, that the angel of the Lord appeared unto Mary. And with, with nothing, um, nothing is impossible with God. And we serve a God that can do the impossible, that does the unthinkable. It was just a shout. The Jericho walls came down. God said, Catrice. I can do, undo, overdo, extra do, mega do, anything beyond human comprehensions. Where man stops, that's where I start. May God add a blessing to the reader and the doers of his word. Amen, amen, and amen. Father, I trust you. Father, I trust you. <laughs> uh, the word of knowledge. Got to give direction. Acknowledge him in all that ways. Me and Walter were talking about that a few Sundays ago. Hallelujah. God just want to know, can you acknowledge him in all your ways? And he'll direct your path. He'll give you direction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, we acknowledge you, Lord God, for who you are, for who you are. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for waking us up this morning, closing us in our right mind, Father God. Father God, rest on us this morning, God. Rest on the youth, God, as you we begin, God. Hey, God, rest on the apostle of this house. Rest on the singers and the minstrel, oh God. Rest in this place oh God uh, rest uh, until we find rest uh, for our weary soul God uh, we rest in your presence God we rest in your presence God uh, oh, oh God uh, consuming fire hey, uh, consuming fire rest in us uh, oh burning bush uh, rest in this place uh, until you, everything is uh, consumed uh, in your presence oh God uh, we will forever forever uh, give you all the glory and honor in Jesus name uh, hallelujah
of my life You're so worthy. worthy, worthy of all of the praise. Worthy of all of the praise. Your Majesty reigns. him everything else will fall into place God alone, be 
Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. And I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Can you just sing that? I love you, Jesus. Lord, I worship and I adore your name. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. I worship and I adore your name, I and, and I just you. want to tell just you, to tell Lord, you. I Lord, I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, I worship and I adore you,
cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. One of the meanings of that word Hosanna is also adoration. It's praise, it's excitement, it's adoration, and it's joy. Amen. So we bless God for that. Amen. And while we're here in this mold, we're going to ask that the elders come. And uh, we're going to prepare, prepare to pray for those that need it. The rest of you can be seated, elders, if you would. Come to the front and uh, let's pray for those and let's let's bless God and say Hosanna, Lord. It's a, it's a term of excitement, so we're excited to see what the Lord God is going to do for His people today. Amen. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. If there's anyone here that needs prayer, needs us to touch and agree on anything that's concerning you. We are here for you this morning, amen. That's right, don't be shy about it, get your answers. Say blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord, we ask that you come quickly, Father, and do what you're gonna do for your people. In Jesus' name, we bless you. Thank you for the Facebook watchers and all our members online and all that we bless God for you this morning. And we pray that God come quickly to your situation and that he is your present help in your time of need. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, Father, for what you are doing and who you are. We adore you, Lord God. We love you more than anything, Lord Jesus. It is you, Father, that we live and we move and we have our very being. It is you that causes us to live. It is you that gives us life. It is you that breathes through us, in us, Father, and on us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your holy name. Father, there are some this week, Father, that will be going in the court systems, Father. We pray, Father, for your hand of mercy upon them. We pray for a quick word on their behalf, Father, and a sure word on their behalf, Father. We thank you for our family members, Father, for all of them, Father, that may be incarcerated at this time. We pray that you send a word quickly to them, Father, in the name of Jesus, and let them be examples, Father. Take their lives from the light from Joseph, Father, in Jesus' name, and, and just let your light shine before you, Father, and before men, that they may see your good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Father, we bless you, Lord Jesus, for turning the wheels, Father, and turning the favor in their behalf in the name of Jesus. We bless you, Father. We say, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We thank you, Father, for all of those that have come up here this morning. They come in your name, believing and trusting in you, Father, that you will send your word to them, that you will send a word of deliverance, a word of healing. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless you, Father, and we give you glory. We give you glory and we give you honor, Father, and once again, we say, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you, Father. You are so worthy. You're worthy of all our praise, God. We thank you for those that are here today. Thank you for a word, Father, that you're going to speak to their spirits and cause them, Father, to know you just a little bit more, Father, in the name of Jesus. We give you glory. We give you praise, God. You're the only true and living God. You're the only true and living God, Father. We declare and decree that you're the only true and living God, Father. We thank you, Lord. You're the only true and living God, Father. You're the only true and living God. You're the only true and living God. You're the only true and living God, Father. You're the only true and living God. We bless you, Father. We love you. More than anything, Father. All of us that agree. In the blessed name of Jesus, agree with me and say amen. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you. Let's give God glory for who he is and what he's done. And all of you that has those palm branches, wave them. Say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I ain't seeing it, so I guess I wave them on your behalf. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Blessed. Amen. Hallelujah, God. We bless you at this time. Stand with me, if you will, and let's bless God for our tithes and offering and what he's blessed our hands to do and to give in Jesus' name. Praise God. We'll let our prayers and our giving go before the Lord as a memorial and watch him shower down the blessings of heaven. Amen. Upon our lives. In Jesus' name, lead us into this. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Bless the words of my hands. Yes. And there's, there's so, so much, much more that you do. You Whenever we come, Whenever I come to into this, this place, place, we see, your, see smiling your smiling face. Just the first fruit is all that you demand. The first fruit is all yes. you demand. Hallelujah. We bless you, Father, for the tithe and the offering. We thank you for blessing our hands, Father, and causing us to prosper in the name of Jesus. We give you great glory and praise for that in Jesus' name. There's no way that I can Hallelujah. So we come before you, Bo. So I come before you, Bo. Yes, we realize, I realize and understand and that the tithe is holy. That the tithe is holy. So you can trust us, Father, to return. For you cast out fruit before it sings and Father in the name of Jesus we bless you we bless you with our hands let's give God great praise with our hands in Jesus name we bless you Father amen say thank you thank you thank you Lord amen you may be seated hallelujah everybody may be seated except for those that celebrate the birthday hallelujah who's celebrating today hallelujah bless the name of the Lord any anniversaries in the house? Brother Mike Walker's dancing in the house. We see you. Hallelujah. We bless you. Elder Green and Joanne, Miss Betty, we thank you, right? Hallelujah. We thank you. Let's celebrate with them and decree the blessings of God over them. Amen. God be given to you on your very special day. the father to yours happy birthday amen now let's go ahead and welcome everybody i should have did that one first but anyway well welcome 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 oh, it's, so good. it's good to see, see you amen in the house of in the, the house of the lord i know you pray your way to me and that's so much like it's lord and i think there is one another
Christina said, woo. She said, we love him, woo. Yes, I love that song, woo. That God will give us all that heaven can afford, amen. So you will not be without. I have a few announcements for you on yesterday. We had our respect organization helicopter Easter egg drop, amen. And it was wonderful. God blessed us from the open heavens, amen. Showered down on us. It was a great time. It was sponsored by the Respect Organization, Summit Media, Jefferson County Sheriff's Office, and more than Conquerors Faith Church. Amen. It was a huge success, and we would say thank you for each of you that um, uh, participated and helped us in any kind of way. We say thank you. Channel 13 did a, a quick little clip for us. We want to go ahead and uh, show that to us if you would pay attention to the screens. Uh, let's roll that right quick, Chris. organization's Easter egg drop. 10,000 eggs filled with money and candy were dropped from a helicopter onto a field. The group also gave away 600 candy bags, 300 Easter buckets, and more than 50 Easter baskets. Pastor Green in that sack race. It's another picture. Look at him. It show him on the ground. He was, <laughs> he was trying to do that sack race. I tell you the truth. That was just wonderful. We have some other pictures we're going to... Oh, there he is. <laughs> Look, there's some more pictures. Y'all enjoy those. Let me step out the way. Come on. Look at that crowd of people. Amen. praise for what he did amen they were looking for those golden eggs they were trying to step over some of the color ones to get them gold ones but it was money in the other ones too they just didn't know amen praise god so thank you guys for all of your help and all that you do to help us uh today also um we're celebrating youth week and our palm sunday youth week today it begins today uh, uh, youth will be leaving here today, going to big time entertainment over in Anderson. Amen. Give God praise for that. And then they'll be staying overnight in Georgia and they'll go to the Coca-Cola Coca -Cola building and do some tours and have a great time. They'll come back and then on Tuesday they have a Zoom meeting and all the parents should have that information already. But we need you parents to make sure that you sign the waivers today. We'll have them for you after service and today. Minister Ashley Parks and Elder David Smith uh, Lodge, Elder Don, uh, Minister Donna Lodge and Elder David Smith will be, <laughs> will be, oh Lord, wait, let's start it over. Minister Ashley Lodge and Elder David Smith will be bringing the word today. I got all kind of twisted up in that, didn't I? Thank you so much for your help. There's only about 500 of y'all that helped me with that. I thank you for that too, okay? Praise the Lord. But let's give God praise on what he's doing with them and with our youth department. They are so excited. We're excited for them. Amen. We bless God for them and bless God for you and the word that will come forth. Amen. Uh, Holy Week continues on uh, today, of course, as we said, Hosanna, Palm Sunday day. The children will do their drama entitled, Do You Know Him? And they have speeches. They've been practicing hard. Parents, you've been bringing them out. It's been just a blessing. We're excited. We can't wait to look forward to them today. Also, today at 4 o'clock p.m., the intercessors will be going over the city to pray. That's at 4 o'clock, and we believe God is going to do his work on that. Amen. And they'll be praying over key points in the 
city. Tomorrow, men, you'll be here in the sanctuary at 6.30. Undeniable men is your theme. Amen. On Tuesday, the women will be here in, that, in the sanctuary praying. We're entitling that first responders. On Wednesday... Uh, it will be a night of healing that will be online. We'll not be here in person. It'll be online. And then on Friday, we'll have the last sayings of Christ where the board of ministry will come together and uh, talk about the last sayings of Christ. We'll also have that on Facebook. And then on Sunday, 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 it'll be Easter Sunday. And we want you to all to come back, bring your families, and enjoy our Easter celebration. Amen. Uh, our Exercise continues. Some of you all took advantage of that last week. So Sandra Rose is going to be there teaching aerobics. That aerobics class will start at 1015, but the open gym starts at 9 o'clock. And we do have a clip for you on that. Amen. Hi, I'm Sandra Rhodes. I'm one of your aerobics instructors here at Bethesda Family Life Center. And I am so excited, guys, for Open Gym. Our kickoff starts March the 16th, 9 until noon. We're going to have all kinds of fun over here. Our game room will be open. We've got a table. We've got air hockey. We've got yeah, we know all the way. We've got foosball. With your family or with your friends so grab a friend and come on out that day we're gonna also have our open gym floor open uh, here for our open gym the gym floor will be open we got some guys that's gonna be shooting basketball we got some ladies up on the walking track that'll be walking grab your friend and walk Yours truly, along with my good friend Tracy Williams will be here. We will be teaching a couple of aerobics classes that day. So come on out and join us, guys, on March the 16th from 9 until noon. We're going to make it a great day of fitness, fun, and fellowship. So hope to see you there. March the 16th, 9 until noon, right here at Bethesda Family Life Center. And it is absolutely free. continuing on for several weeks so we pray that you come out and uh, join us on that join me on the track I'll be there okay join me on the track amen praise the Lord Pastor Green has prepared a 40-day devotional now it ends on this Friday so we have a whole week that we can continue reading that and uh, okay thank you we'll uh, just continue that amen give me a break has been our 10 minute bible study have you been enjoying that with pastor green amen we thank god for that amen that's been quick we've had great response on that great great response and now our, our, our metrics are numbers are up on that thank you for that uh, also the lunch and learn if you've been watching that you've been getting up a, um, a link to watch that it's been great i've had just a tremendous time watching it actually and we just encourage you to watch it as well remember we ask you guys for uh, benevolence items uh, we want you to continue to collect them really really soon we're going to be asking you to bring them over to the church okay so as you're doing your spring cleaning we want you to remember that and just cast them aside for a minute okay but then bring them back we'll give you that date it's going to be really really soon and we thank you for that we're also in the midst of my share in the kingdom you have been responding to that very well we ask that you continue and those of you that have not fulfilled your commitments to go ahead and do that okay take care of that we do have some envelopes that the ushers will pass out a little later for you to fulfill your commitments if this is your first time visiting with us we have a qr code on the screen we ask that you go ahead and scan that give us some information or just meet us in the visitor center after service we have a little gift for you we would like to give to you at this time our ushers are going to come we have our tithes and offering envelope it's time we we've already blessed the lord with the song we're now it's time to go ahead and put it in your envelopes and uh, get ready to bless him today the gold envelopes are for the tithes and the offering uh the tithe the offering is for the white envelope we also have the first um first fruit envelope and we also have the mind share Envelope. So just tell them what you need, and they'll be glad to help you with that, okay? Uh, remember, it's first fruit times, and we do have that. There are two teachings 
that Pastor Green wants to remind you of that he's strongly recommending that the whole congregation review. One was the all night prayer, the prophetic insight on, uh, on a Genesis 315 night, the seven spring blessings, and a message taught by Pastor Green towards the parents and youth from the throne room losing the bear grip. Okay, so we want to make sure that you go there both online and make sure that you take advantage of that. Amen. So give God praise for all he's done. He's doing some other things. Today we're getting ready for our uh, children's drama. Are you guys excited about it? Come on, give God praise. We're going to ask Sister Whitney to come up and she's going to give us a little, little brief description of what's going to be happening today. Let's give God praise as she comes. Amen. And if I can also get someone, the guys, if you would remove this, move this for me out the way. Thank you so very much. With haste. I'm just saying, I just always want to say that on the mic. Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. You should be a little more excited. It's Palm Sunday. Um, I'm excited to celebrate with you um, and excited that I get the opportunity to introduce what's about to happen. Um, and I know you like, introduce what's about to happen. It's a play. And that's a cute word. Um, but as you know, as a church, we've been in a season, a season of resetting and going back to the basics of what it means to be a church, especially in the world that we live in today, where I think church is more, people are more focused on big business within the church than the business of saving souls. Um, and as a temple baby, Myself, pastors use that term a lot, and y'all know what that is. I've raised in this church. I can tell you the benefits of being a seed somewhere that water is happening all the time. Um, I, I won't get into recounting to you the amount of times that those things that were implemented in me saved my life. But what I will tell you is that what you're about to see is the revival of that, of investing into that seed, especially us claiming to be a church that is a family church, a Bible teaching center, teaching quality word and producing quality disciples. What you're seeing is not your children. You're seeing the disciples that will change the world for the kingdom. And it's important that you understand that because it's easy to look at your baby and go, oh, that's my baby. But the Lord does not define them as your baby. He defines them as heritage from him. Heritage is a possession of an individual that is gifted to you, not because you're so special, but because you're in lineage with him. That's not your baby. That's God's baby. And he gifted that gift to you because you're in line with him and it is your responsibility because the end of that scripture says there are also arrows in the hands of a warrior. You're the hands. So if you've done nothing to hone that weapon so that it can hit its target, you failed. You failed your responsibility to prepare them for what it is that God wants them to do. And I saw another scripture after that one that said, I'm sorry I had to write it because I knew I'd be too excited. You don't give a, a temple baby responsibility to introduce temple babies. She be touched. I've been crying all morning. So the second word that I saw was Proverbs 22nd and 6th where it says, Start your children in the way that they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. So I was reared in a house where my mother put holy oil on my head before the school year, before I walked on the door and told me to go in excellence. She commanded everything in that school year to bow to me and for me to bring everything that I didn't even know to my remembrance, to tap into the knowledge of God. She did that for me, for my brother, for all my siblings. That was normal to me that I was supposed to get my prayer before I went to school. It was normal to me that I knew my spring break started here at church, at Children's Week. It was normal to me that I knew Halloween meant hallelujah. It was normal to me that God was in my everyday life. And now when I feel lost, I know it's because I've moved and he hasn't. I know how to get myself back in line. I know where I need to go to find my peace. I know where I need to go to get mental stability and clarity. I know where I need to go to prosper because I was raised that way that if he's not there, something's wrong. So, again, I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> There's one more scripture. The last one, because I knew there'd be people that say, well, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And by worldly standards, you probably are. That baby's probably fed and clothed. That baby's enrolled in school. 
but there's something missing if God is not a part of the everyday in your home. The last one said that in order to fulfill your requirement as that warrior with that arrow in your hand, you must write the commandments that the Lord has given you on your hearts. And it says, get them inside you, because you're the first step as the warrior. And it says, get them inside your children. And you go, how? I bring it to church. <laughs> the baby at church. It says, talk about them wherever you are, sitting at home, walking in the street. Talk about them from the time you get up in the morning till you go, bed at, you go to bed at night. Tie them on your hands and foreheads as a reminder and inscribe them on your doorposts in your home. So if God is not intricately woven in the way you're rearing that child, you've, con you've sent into your a child to death and you have failed the Lord's gift to you. So what you're about to see is our investment into those gifts because we are under a, a prophet an apostle that understands the responsibility of rearing those children. So you can get in line with us and let us help you get them where they need to go. So I present to you a play written by my mother called Do You Know Him? Good day. I'm Thomas Wilson with WBMG News here live on the streets of Jerusalem. There seems to be unrest in the city surrounding the celebrations on, about Easter that began on Palm Sunday. Unbelievers say that these celebrations infringe on the rights of atheists and non-believers. Their biggest assertion is that Jesus did not rise from the grave. However, opposers also known as believers, say that Jesus in fact lived, died, and was resurrected. Uh, I actually think I see a few of the protesters here, and if we can get them on camera, just zone in there. Uh, excuse me, ladies, uh, really quick, do you know this Jesus? I wonder if you can tell me, what is it you know about Jesus? Jesus. What you know about Jesus? He's all right. What you know about Jesus? He's all right. Something Jesus. Uh, maybe we can try these people here. Excuse me. Uh, do you all also know this Jesus? Yes. yes. You know Jesus? Yes. Uh, do you mind telling me and my camera crew here what it is you know about Jesus? Of course. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Yes. He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of the dry ground. Yes. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, yes. a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Yes. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely yes. he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. Yes. But he was pierced for our transgressions. Yes. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amen. He was oppressed and afflicted, yes. yet he did not open his mouth. Yes. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, yes. and a sheep before its shears is silent, so yes. he did not open his mouth. Amen. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away, yes. for he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was punished. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life yes. and be satisfied by his knowledge. My righteous servant will yes. justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Amen. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great yes. and divide the spoils with the strong, yes. because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. Amen. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Yes. Amen. 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 Kids, I, I, 
I think that's awesome and all, but I'm sorry. This sounds like a lot of suffering, a lot of pain. I think I, think I heard you say something about punishment. Yes. How do you know that this man is so great? How do you know that he's the Messiah, the Savior? Dude, I can feel him in my hand. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel him in my soul. Yeah. I can't breathe without him. Yeah. I can't live. <laughs> about Jesus. It seems that everyone from the adults to the children know about this Jesus. But my question is, do people really teach children what they should know about Jesus even at these young ages? Uh, excuse me, ma'am. I think I think I see a good person. Are, are you a teacher here at Jerusalem Academy? Yes, young man, and my name is Teacher Truth. Te How may I help I'm you? I'm sorry, can you repeat that name one more? Teacher Truth. Teach the truth? Yes. Teach the truth. Teach the truth. Teach the truth. Teach the truth. Are you speaking in tongues, young man? No, 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 ma'am. I don't speak in tongues. Sorry. Uh, that's just a little exercise I do to, you know, remember oh, oh, the names. Oh, okay. Uh, my question is, do you really think that even young babes can tell the truth? Of course they can. These children, they can tell your truth. They can tell my truth. They tell their parents' truth. They tell everybody's truth. And you need to come and talk with them because my children are smart and they are not ashamed to testify about their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So it's okay if we get there. Yes, stories? it is. All yes, right, it awesome. Is. Can we go right up? I would love for you to come. All right, well, I've here we go. I've got to get to my class now. Again, this is Thomas Wilsey with WBMG News. I'm here live at Jerusalem Academy, and we've got Mrs. Teacher Truth, and she is going to be sharing some of the stories from her youth. Good morning, boys and girls. We have a friend visiting with us today. This young man, he wants to know what you know about Jesus. So do you want to tell him what you know and what you believe about Jesus? Yeah. Do you really want to tell him? Yeah. Okay, so who wants to go first? Who wants to go first? Okay, let's see, let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's go with, I think I heard Kelsey louder than anyone else. Come on, Kelsey. <laughs> okay, you want to go, oh, Kelsey will come later. Let's go with Reese. Reese, you want to go? You want to tell us something? Reese is going to tell us something about Jesus. Jesus, you and me. He is also in heaven. He is also in heaven. Jesus, you and me. Yeah. Come on, Harlem. Harlem. Harlem can tell us something. Jesus is alive. You ask me how I know. He's alive. He lives in my heart. Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Take off her Easter. It's so precious to me. Thank God for Jesus. I'm happy as I can to be. Micah. Come on, Micah. Right, right. 
great, great. Haley Grace. Not many words, but a lot I say. Christ our Lord is risen today. Rylan? Rylan. Make me sad, and and I and my teacher and my teacher say I was bad. I can always depend on Christ because He makes me glad. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Olivia. My little head can clap, clap, clap. My little voice can sing. My little heart believes it's true, and Jesus is my King. Judah. Who has known that baby born in Bethlehem still could possibly be the Messiah to born to save us all? Yay! Mason! Amen. You can believe on God's only Son who wants to take your sins away. He's patiently waiting for you to come. Won't you believe and receive Him today? Isabella! Jesus Christ is a strong man. He was beaten again and again, but he never complained. Thanks, Christ, for enduring the pain. All right, Junior, come on. Chanquise, Junior, come on. Come on. No, that's right. Easter time is here. Still lots and lots of tears. Christ raised from the dead. Exactly he said. Yay! Paisley and Gabby. Tell everyone, tell everyone Jesus has risen on Easter Day. Tell everyone, tell everyone he can show us the way. Yeah. Tell everyone, tell everyone he saved us from our sins. Tell everyone to accept Jesus and win. All right. Miana and Micah. All right. God's love is constant. God's love is pure. God's love is constant. God's love is pure. That he really cares, you can all be sure. God's love is constant. God's love is pure. God's love is for you and me here. Together. May, May you enjoy God's love all season long and beyond. Yay. Jackson, come on, Jackson. Come on, Jackson. She's so clap, clap, clap your hands. Shout loud and with us dance. Lift, lift, lift your voice. Sing your praise with us. Rejoice. Okay, Nicholas. Accepting Jesus as Savior can change your life and mine because he came to die and save all mankind. Give praises to God this Easter for what he has done. He raised Jesus from the dead, his one and only son. Yay. Now, did I not tell you, sir? I mean, uh, honestly, Miss Truth, I am impressed. Okay. I cannot believe that children, the little children, the, the tall children, they all seem to know about Jesus. Okay, well, and where are, my, where are my helpers? I need for you to go and get the snack ready. Help, helpers? Miss Truth, I have to give it to you. You seem to have great control over the class. You've got helpers, you've got speakers, you've got people. You've been teaching them well. I told you, my children are smart. Well, here's a question, children. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? My question is, if Jesus is really the Messiah, is he not here right now? He's in heaven, silly. Well, I know. I get, get that. I'm saying, how do you know he's not over there in a graveyard somewhere? No, silly. He arose. I guess that told you. I guess so, huh? Yeah. Hosanna in the highest, let our King be lifted up, Hosanna. 
I started out today covering this story, I wasn't so sure that I could be convinced. They say that Jesus, a man who is on high, the God of gods, almighty, all powerful, I couldn't imagine how he would give up a throne in heaven to come down to earth <laughs> and to live and to, be, uh, to suffer and to be abused like us, like me and you. But after hearing it from even the smallest of children up until the teenage, and, is, and, and they have such conviction about it, to say that a man really loved us so much that he would step down from that place, he would give his only son to live, to die, and all of that just to get up so that we might have life so that that blood that he shed would reach all the way from then, all the way into today, and would guide us into the rest of our future. Man, isn't that good? That somebody loved you before, before you even knew you. Before your parents even thought of you, there was somebody who already considered you. I'm sorry, but as for me, all I can say is, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided I'm gonna follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back, 
Are there any witnesses to that? Can anybody else witness to that? Have you decided to follow Jesus? To follow Jesus, I have decided. Thank you, Lord. To follow Jesus, I have decided. To follow Jesus, no turning back. No Building when you rest on your feet, I have, I have decided. Follow Jesus. Will you follow? Give him a worship right where you are. I have decided. I have decided to follow. I have decided. I'm going to follow. it up out of your belly. I have decided all I over the building. Decided You're fully persuaded this morning. As we get ready to transition into another word from another dimension of our young people. Tell me mighty good to follow I have decided The world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. The cross is ever before me. No 
praise Him. Right before we get ready for our youth ministers, uh, I need you, those of you that's been walking with God for a while, uh, I need you to open your mouth right now. Uh, I, I, I need you to give God a praise and praise. Uh, I need you to give a Hosanna. Praise now. Uh, I need you to open your mouth uh, as He walks down that Via Della Rosa. Save me now! Take about 30 more seconds! 
to preach. This is what it's like when I get ready to preach. I don't quench the spirit for nobody. I don't quench the spirit. Program can wait. I don't quench the spirit. Pray without ceasing. Rejoice evermore. In everything, give God thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Despise not prophesying in my eyes. Despise uh, not prophesying. Quench not the spirit. Abstain from the very appearance of evil. Prove all things. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Your spirit, soul, and body. Be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. For faithful is he that is calling us. And we don't have to do it because he will do it. I'm just trying to not quench it. And if you don't make the whole trip, if you have to leave before they're through, please leave quietly. No, it's not just PG. Kill all of the mics to kill them. Savior. Jesus. What is he like? Let your name be poured forth as ornament. Oh, Jesus. That's the conversation we were having the other day. Jesus. If you're going to do it, do it. Jesus. Let all heaven. Let all heaven. heaven. We're calling on heaven, not city hall. And earth.
I suspect in my holy of holies that this week of celebration, Elder Rochelle will be second to none. Oh my God. That the weight of glory and the revelation of I was awakened before I bring these speakers. In other words, I want you to just read the, the whole Matthew's version of the story so it can be fresh in your spirit. The revelation that the Lord gave me, women of God, for first responders on, on Tuesday night, you would be crazy not to be here Tuesday. It's going to be crazy. I was going to sit back and do nothing, but I can't help when he talks. And to the men, tomorrow I'll be talking about bad sportsmanship. They made sport. They made a sport out of crucifying Jesus. The Amplified Bible uses it. They made a sport. When they were crowning him, they were making a sport. They made it a sport. It was March and April madness at its most demonic form. Men, I'll meet you. Be it one, two, or three, or 20, or 30, or 40, or 50, or 60. We will gather. And as for the children, I couldn't get past when Pilate turned him over. And they chose two thieves over Jesus. The elephant in the room on the cross was the thieves. It wasn't Jesus. It was what he was dying for, for was for robbers that would rob him of his glory that don't know who he is. What are we going to say as I transition? They said, give us Barabbas. Because sometimes we don't know what we want God to give us, do we? We asking God for stuff, and we don't even know what we're asking for. Give us Barabbas. Even if God gave you what you ask, it may be a Barabbas. It may not even be God's choice at all. It may be the people's choice. But their final thing that gets me uh, the most, and I'm through out of the way for this word about our youth, was around verse 40 or somewhere in there. They said, well, after Pilate got through scourging him, they said he saved others, but he could not save himself. And the reason we want Barabbas, even if it means the bloodshed, or repercussion, vengeance. They say, don't take it on us. It says, his blood be upon our children. That's in Matthew 26, if you'd like to just quickly round for it. It says, his blood be upon our children. See, your rejection of Jesus goes far beyond your immediate repercussions. It affects your children. If we find that in there, let me know. It's around Matthew 26, 27. Did we, it could be 27. I don't know. It's in there off the cuff. But they, they were going to say his blood be upon our children. We're asking not his violent blood be on our children. We're asking for the, his redeeming blood to be upon our children. Will you give God a praise right now that what you saw go before me? That the blood of redemption be upon our children and not the blood of wrong decisions. Will you please give God a praise right now? May his blood, it's on the screen there, 27, 25, then answered the people and said what? His blood be upon us and, and on our children. Why don't we thank God that the devil can't do nothing to us nor our children? Because, come on, that's all. That whatever was on us has got to get off us because the blood of Jesus is on us and his blood is on our children. 
but they weren't talking about redeeming blood. So as we transition, I want to, obviously, this flight is taking us another direction and Ashley and David will know how to make the transition and may not be able to do everything you got written because of what's flowing, but let's let it do what it do. Y'all, y'all been in the house. You know what these things happen. You have to make adjustments as you need to. I've taught you to do that, and I believe you'll be able to do it. Amen. So for these next Holy Ghost minutes, whatever time may have been allowed, that was before the Holy Ghost fell. <laughs> That's why we have ministers training class. That's why we have ministers training class. We make the adjustments. Amen. God's been good in this place. Let's give the Lord a hand for our arts department, our children's department. Come on, give God a hand of praise. That was some good stuff, man. Our, our arts is just going somewhere, man. Our dad, come on, y'all. Parents, for getting your children involved and believing in me enough to know that if I ask for your children to be involved, you ought to have them in the house of God. Help me to help you to help your children. And Shirley, and although could that sound like the end of the speech, at this time, those that are working with our youth as arrows, and they've been doing a stellar job. I, I won't even take any more time. I'm going to let them come in their own way. They work consistently. They're both educators, and I'm going to get out of the way. Will you, as uh, Sister Ashley Leitch comes, will you give the Lord a big Holy Ghost reception? They're tag teaming. And then David Leitch, they will come. They already been given. Give the Lord. Please welcome them like you would like to be welcome. Amen. God bless you, woman of God. Amen. I'm going to take my tambourine just in case I get to shouting. Amen. Glory to God. Um, I would like to say first glory to God. And of course, I would like to... Um, just say thank you for the assignment, um, just trusting us with the assignment. Um, just want to honor you and First Lady D, just for all y'all have done, family, everything. Just thank y'all. Um, <clears throat> I had three kids up here, and it just blessed me to see them just worshiping God the way that they did. Um, but I'm going to have to shake that off real quick because I got to a teacher's anointing, and I have a lot that I want to say, but I'm going to condense that. Okay, first of all, um, Brother David blessed us with an amazing theme for today, which comes out of John 10 and 27, and it talks about um, the shepherd. Um, well, the whole, really, the whole chapter, he's uh, talking about the shepherd, but one of the things that he says is that his sheep knows his voice and that they will follow him, so this theme for this year is Jesus followers, okay? All right, so with that being said, if I had a theme, it would be Jesus followers, the theme, and it would be like, share, follow Jesus. I know a lot of you all are on social media, right? So today we're going to talk about the shepherd and social media. Um, we live in a day and age where, you know, it's hard because Jesus is competing with social media. And the reason why I say that is because if you ever pay attention to most of your social media networks, they're asking people to follow them. Follow, 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 right? And so if we're going to go forward with this message, we're going to talk about following, followers, and unfollow. So when we talk about following, again, we already talked about John 10 and 27. Y'all did I pray? Uh-uh, can't go forward. Father God, we just thank you. We love you. God is never too late to pray. Um, I need you. I give you praise, honor, and glory. Thank you for this time. Speak now in Jesus' name. Amen. Just want to do what I need to do. Um, okay. So John 10 and 27 says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I asked the Lord, I was like, why is the voice so important? Why not his word, right? And the Holy Spirit revealed to me that even like if you have a child, even if that child didn't understand your words, they will recognize your voice. Does that make sense? And so that means that I build a relationship not with my words, but with my voice. And so that's important. But the unfortunate thing is, is that when we have a generation that is, you know, it's, they're used to social media, it's hard because there are so many options and so many voices. And if there are so many voices, it's competing with his voice, right? And it makes it difficult to follow him properly. Now, 
when I think about this, I think about um, Samuel. And in 1 Samuel 3, 1 through 10, I'm not going to read it. Um, Samuel um, was given over to the Lord by his mother. And he heard one night the Lord called him. He ran to Eli, which was the priest. And he said, um, yes, you know, basically, yes. And he said, I didn't call you. And he did it two more times. And then Eli picked up on the fact that it was the Lord calling him. He said, if you hear it again, then he said, say, yes, Lord. Speak, Lord. Your, uh, your servant is listening, right? Well, the thing about that is, is two points. Number one, God used Eli, Eli to help Samuel hear the voice of God. That's like a shepherd, right? Our earthly shepherd that's here um, in this, our spiritual shepherd that's here in this house, right? So sometimes when we come to church, the youth, or my youth, the youth may feel like this is an experience for them. This is an experience, for, I mean, for their parents, but this is an experience for them. Now, y'all going to be mad at me about this, but I don't care. But if I could admonish you, teach your children to shut out all social media during church because that voice is competing with his voice. And what you're saying is, is that that voice has more of an influence in your life than the voice does in, in, in your, uh, than God does in your life. So here's the thing. If you think about it, if you're communicating, I've actually seen kids with AirPods in their ear in service. That, that means that they can't even get instructions and they don't know the voice of God, right? So it's important for us to keep them in the sanctuary so the shepherd can help them to learn the voice of God. I'm going to keep going because I got a lot. Okay. <clears throat> now, when you think about 2 Timothy 4 and 3 through 4, he says that this is going to happen. He says that for this time is coming when people will not tolerate, endure sound and wholesome instruction. But having ears itching for something pleasing and gratifying, they will gather to themselves one teacher after another to, cons to a considerable number, chosen to satisfy their own liking, to foster the errors they hold, and will turn aside from hearing the truth and wander off into myths and man-made fiction. Now, you could think it's just entertainment, but what it is, it's leading you away from the father it's leading you away from the shepherd jesus does that make sense so all of these different voices in your ear it's a type of schizophrenia it's so many different voices you don't know which way to go have you ever played a game a telephone anybody ever played that by the time it gets to the last person the message is messed up so everybody's saying God said this. Well, this is what God said, and this is what God said. That's why we have such a skewed view on what God really is saying and what his word is saying. All right, so if you don't think that that's true, if I had four people up here, I don't have time. Think about it. If these people were directly in front of me, and Jesus was over there, and I'm supposed to be following Jesus, I'm going to follow what's directly in front of me, right? If they go off to the right, I'm going to follow them off to the right. And that's what's happening. So this is the two questions I want you to ask yourself. Why, who am I following and who are they following? Because if you don't know, what you're following is leading you based on what they're following. And it might not be by the word of God, right? This is for parents too. Because pastor actually pulled the scripture that I was thinking about, which was they actually asked which you don't don't let the blood be on your hand. It'll be on our hand. I mean, on our hands and our kids. Like it's some things that us as parents are getting into that it seems like it's okay. And instead of breaking a generational curse, we're starting a generational curse because what's going to happen is those kids are going to take on what you're leading them because you're following someone else, right? Okay. So if you think about 1 Timothy 2 and 14, and it says, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. The problem is not always that we don't know the voice of God. Here's the problem. is that you know the voice of God, but you're following somebody who doesn't. That's wrong. It's out of order. You should be leading them. And we found ourselves as a generation, the generation behind us, that we know what Jesus is saying. But we're following people who don't know what Jesus is saying. So guess what happens? So the serpent wasn't just out to attack man and woman. He was out to attack order. It's out of order for Eve to have told Adam anything and he listened. Adam heard the voice of God. You know the voice of God. 
we know the voice of God. So if we have unbelievers and people who don't know the voice of Jesus, how in the world will we feel comfortable following someone who's not being led by Jesus? And I'm going to tell you what that's called misleading they're misleading you on a path that is not the path that the shepherd has for you he leads me down a path of righteousness am i right it's not happening if you're allowing somebody who doesn't have that voice from jesus to lead you all right we're gonna keep going so now we're talking about followers so you did the following but now you have followers and this is a great responsibility y'all first corinthians 9 through 13 and the niv it says be careful, however, that you exercise the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. For if someone with a weak conscience sees you with all your knowledge eating in an idol's temple, won't that person be emboldened to eat what is sacrificed to the idols? So this weak or weak brother or sister for whom Christ died is destroyed by your knowledge. Let me explain what that means is that you know better. And just because you have the choice and the freedom of everybody else, Paul said, just because I can do it, it don't mean that it's right. It don't mean it's the best thing for me. You're going to have to be very responsible because just because you're following Jesus, it doesn't mean that you're leading well, okay? Because when we are in school or we're on our jobs, adults, it's people who know you say that you believe in God and that they know that you're a Jesus follower. But then your conduct is contrary to what you're saying you believe in. And guess what happens? They start saying, well, oh, well, if she does it, it got to be okay for me to do it. And that's a responsibility you'll have to answer for because you're misleading someone else. Does that make sense? And it says that when you sin against them in this way, and wound their weak conscience, you, you sin against Christ. Y'all, that's a heavy assignment. It's not easy being a leader. And for us adults, and it seems like it's easy for us, it ain't, it's not getting any easier for us. It's hard being in certain spaces and places, but you have to remember that whatever you're doing, someone is watching you, and you are leading them in a way, either going to be contrary to what Jesus is saying, or it's going to be on the right path that Jesus is saying. So then you have... When you're misled, what happens? When you're on social media, you don't like something, you don't like somebody, what you do, so, uh, youth? You, you unf oh, she said block. Unfollow them. She's just going the whole way. You unfollow them, right? And this is what the world is trying to do. They're trying to get you to fall so out of love with Jesus, to believe that his word really ain't that. That the word that's in the world is more potent than what he's saying. And it'll start getting you from following Jesus to like, oh, oh, well, maybe this is right. Maybe this is right. And you're stopped following him. And the problem is too many of us are unfollowing him. John 6 and 65 says, he went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the father has enabled them. Here's the problem. Verse 66 says, and by the way, it's John 666. It's really weird. But it says, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. It was a hard saying, and I'm going to be real. Some of the things that the word says, our flesh hated. Because it puts us in submission or it makes us feel guilty or it makes us feel like we don't have the freedom that the world has. And so what happens is instead of us submitting to what the word says, we decide unfollow. I ain't doing that. That ain't what God said. It ain't that deep. But it is. And it was his own disciples. Jesus was talking about a hard teaching. They said, who can accept this? This is a hard teaching. And that's what some people are saying. Let me tell you what's a hard teaching. What God says about waiting until marriage youth. What God says about um, tithing. A lot of people don't like to hear that. What God says about him being the only way. The world going to tell you it's multiple ways to get to God and that's a lie. What, 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 the, what the world is saying about same-sex relationships. They're trying to okay a lot of things that the word of God is saying. That ain't it. And you ain't going to get here with me if you follow that way. Now, it's not to say that you have to be perfect. It's just saying that consciously, if I fall, I'm going to get back on that path and keep following him and not submit to my flesh and say, well, I'm a sinner. I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing. So what has to happen is, is that now we have to get the order right. Remember I said that uh, 
Adam and Eve got things out of order. You have to get the order right. But this time, instead of following first, you have to, first, you have to now unfollow. And what are the things you must unfollow? All the things that you've been following. Anything that you have put before you and it's not God, it makes him more distant from you. And you keep lining up people, lining up people. I want y'all to pull out your phone. I want y'all to see how many people y'all are following on social media. And then I want you to see who they're following. And then I want you to see if it lines up with the word of God. And I want you to understand all those people that you're following, whether you like it or not, they're in your ear. And they're telling you something that you should not be listening to. So you're going to have, I'm not telling you to unfollow people and just not follow anybody. Because following is good, especially when it's with the word of God, someone leading you right. But what I'm saying is, be mindful of what you're following. They're okay in songs and movies and stuff, and y'all just going along with it. Y'all, that stuff is being implanted in y'all's system. Adults, concerts, TV shows, these re reality shows. That stuff is implanting stuff in your subconscious and it's causing you to want to act out what's been planted in your head. Does that make sense? So 2 Timothy 2 and 22 says, flee your youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. What, what else must we do? Now we can follow him. We've unfollowed everything else. Now we can follow him. So if you follow his lead, don't allow yourself to lead yourself. You got you to gotta come off of that. Allow him to lead you. And if he leads you, according to Psalms 23, it means that he's going to lead you on paths of righteousness. Right standing. That's what righteousness means. Right standing with God. If you're following him, he's only going to teach you how to go. He's only going to teach you the right way to go. And it says also that um, Ma Matthew 16 and 24, I hope David not going to say this, but it says, then said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. It is not going to be easy. Youth, it is not going to be easy. It's going to hurt sometimes. It's going to feel like you're alone. But guess what? You might be lonely, but you're never alone according to his word. Adults, it's going to be hard. There are some relationships that you are fostering as adults that are not good for you. That's causing you to lead in a wrong way. So you're going to have to follow his lead. And lastly, the one thing that is so important is to get the part right. As you all arrows, people are looking to you as the body of Christ. People are looking to us. And if they're looking to us, we're going to have to pay attention to how we act. So number one, you have to make sure that you understand what's going to follow you. Not just people, but there's something important. I need you to get, gain this, this gift. Mark 16, 17 through 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Y'all are going to be able to do tremendous stuff. Men and women of God, y'all are going to be able to do mighty things in this world. Doing things on behalf of the kingdom of God. And the only way that you could do it is if, number one, you're following Jesus. And then you got to believe his word. And it says that these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. That mental illness that's going on in school, cast it out. That's demonic in the name of Jesus. Yeah, that lustful spirit, cast it out in the name of Jesus. And they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You got healing power in y'all. Hey, in here, you got family members who need you to go to their house and lift them up and pray for them. But you can't do it by being misled and not following Jesus. And so if I would close, I would close with our theme for the year, which is Joshua 24 and 15. This is what I need you to say when you get to school, youth. This is what I need you to say when y'all get to home, declare it over your children, over your youth, to say, as for me and my house, hey, youth, as long as you in his house, as long as you in your parents' house, it ain't your house. It's out of order, parents, for them to dictate us. That's like Adam and Eve. While you in their house, youth, while you're in their house, you're going to serve the Lord. And if you keep that path, y'all are going to do mighty things on behalf of the kingdom of God. You're going to do things that no one thought you could ever do. 
And the last thing is follow Jesus because he will never lead you wrong. Amen. And I'm praying that my brother David, he come up here and 2.0 this thing because y'all are so important to us. Y'all are so mighty to us. First Timothy 4 and 12, if I'm not mistaken, don't let anyone despise you for your youth. Be the example. You're going to have to be the example to adults, to your friends, youth, to your friends. Be the example in Jesus' name. I love y'all. Come on, come on, give it up. Come on, give it up for Minister Ashley Lige. Awesome. Man, that song that they had in the... um, drama vignette there I've decided to follow Jesus was so on point with what you just heard I promise you I heard every word you said there some of us gonna have to just unfollow some folk amen this generation everybody talking about how many follows we got how many likes we got how many friends we got but the Bible says he that have friends must show himself friendly which means in order to follow them there must be something about you that they like and sometimes or you following people because birds of a feathering flock together we have to watch that what a priceless teaching of understanding authority and order come on let's give god a praise at a time where the world is so confused all right will you stand to your feet once more to uh we just want to honor every gift that's coming before us amen and i so bless god uh for david david uh, travels a lot he's in and out of the house a lot traveling on mission but it i don't care where he is he gonna call you he gonna be texting me d somebody the staff and uh finding out how do you that's that's what i'm looking for i'm looking for people that can travel the world be sent on assignment and don't forget where home is i'll know how great you are by how you follow orders i'll know how great you are by how not only you take care of your ministry and what you setting up but how you take care do you only get up for what you're doing and he's one of those that does that quite well amen we watched doing the um new year's party i think he had just got back in town he had been out of town for like three months or something and he and Walter about single-handedly, man, they, they were putting those things together. And Whitney, you know what I'm saying, just making it happen. It was almost like he wasn't a world traveler. It was almost like he wasn't saw that. Who are you traveling with? Well, Usher, one of them boys. It wasn't Usher. It wasn't Pastor Green. I know that. Okay, whoever that might be. That's one of the big guys out there. But somebody born. But then he came back to a man born here. But he loves the Word of God, and he's just a humble guy. And Whatever he finds his hands to do, do it. Won't you help me celebrate those that's trying to be large and doing it big, but they're under somebody that understand all that the world. We are most blessed to have you leading along with Ashley. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please help me receive Minister David Smith. I know you know him as a drama, but take them drumsticks off him right now and, and, and wax eloquent in the word. Amen. Can we give God a praise for Minister Lodge? Whoa. Okay. I'm going to ask you to do it again. I'm sorry, y'all. If I kind of stare at you, don't be offended. I'm going to see you or two. Maybe that come from a classroom, so I'm just... That's what that is. Can we give God a praise? That was an excellent. <laughs> Man, that was excellent. Lord, we thank you. Whoa. You keep going. This is me digesting everything that just happened. It's a lot that just happened. Father, we thank you right now for what you have already done. (laughs) Thank you for what you have already done. And thank you what you're doing now. And thank you what you're going to do in the future. Thank you that our children and our youth will be affected by the anointing of God that just took place. And if you start clapping, I just won't stop. (laughs) Don't don't give me... (laughs) We give your name praise lord if you only knew people of god i'm praying and talking to you at the same time if you only knew what just took place 
from the Gen Alpha. I think that's what they call them, generation. We thank you that you're doing something now for the Generation Z and even in our millennials. And we thank you for the ones that have been sowing to us. Let's bless God for the baby boomers. Let's plant those seeds for every generation of, that's after them. Clap, clap for them because we speaking life to the baby boomers. Even your time is not done. Your time is not done. As we go up, as you go up, we go up. So we, I feel like praying for the baby boomers right now in Jesus' name. Speak life. I speak life into their, your life is not done. I know some of you trying to figure out what's next, but I speak to you right now because you are the wisdom for all, everything that comes out of you. I'm not making this up, this is fresh. I pray for them right now that you would keep their mind young. That they won't lose their mind. Speak wisdom. We come against all timers in Jesus' name. All timers in their gifts. All timers in their vision. All timers wherever they go. They have the right mind. They have the mind of Christ. And they still have that attitude of a servant. In Jesus' name, can we clap and give God praise? Thank you, I can hear myself. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. If I need to get another mic, I don't, I don't mind. This mic got a demon on it. Jesus Christ. Not you, you are great. It's just this, I'm suffering a little bit. All right. Huh, you wheat. It's here. Make some laws for the you. You where y'all at? Ow! Come here, Alec. Put Alec on the spot. Yep. He didn't know I was going to do it. Come here, Brooke. I think. I'm going to pick which one. I'm going to pick on y'all just a minute. All right. So, you week is here. How did I get it? Simple. I, I do it every year. I'll be trying to beat pastor. That was supposed to be funny. Okay. They know that. They know to do that. <laughs> Even it's not fun. I was trying to, you know, me and Pat, no, we don't have this thing, but anytime Elder Walker texts me and say, hey, what you got for you? We, and I, at the time, I didn't have anything. <laughs> and I was sitting there like, okay, God, you got to give me something. And um, I thank God for travel in this particular time. I don't know if you guys heard me. I've been traveling with Jeffrey Osborne, Mr. Woo Woo Woo. Y'all act like y'all don't know that. Some of y'all made y'all kids all woo, woo, woo. We ain't going to tell nobody. Pop, pop, boom. <laughs> all right. But we went on a cruise, and uh, we was there for a week. And um, I was sitting there. I said, Lord, I need something. So I was reading my devotion and landed on what I'm going to be talking about today, Matthew, dealing with the book of Matthew on how they follow Jesus. I'm going to stop because I'll start preaching. And I don't want you up here too long. Um, and God gave it to me, and I started listening to this song. I said, bam, there it is, Jesus followers. And we went from there, and we're going to impact. And that's what we've been doing every, every week, impacting these type of youth and the youth here at More to Conquerors to be better Jesus followers. Guess what? With confidence. Yeah, you're going to follow, you're going to do all that, but don't lead Jesus to the side. <laughs> In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. In all the ways, even when you're in hell, he's there. <laughs> Take him with you. All right, I wanted to call one of them out. Any minute, my name You. All right, so tell them a little about what arrows mean. And you're going you're gonna to quote, quote the scripture. Bam. Oh, you, oh, I'm going to let y'all figure that out. Who's going to do what? You got it? You want to come back at the end? No, no, yeah. You got the scripture. You, is it now? Is it now? Okay. Get close to it. Okay. Um, arrows means anointed remnants. Okay. Yeah. Anointed remnants representing order, worship, and service. Okay. Good job. There you go. 
Um, the scripture is Psalms 127.4, and it is, as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the youth. Bam! Good job! Yeah! All right, you go sit back down, because I know. <laughs> yeah, I'll give him another hand. <laughs> All right. So every, every week, they have homework, right? Because I'm an educator as well, a band teacher, still an educator, I make sure they are equipped with the word. So every week, I'm asking them a question. Like, okay, what did we talk about last week? Blah, blah, blah. And we be, we've been average about 10 people. Um, but I think after today, more is going to come. Because we want to feel the importance of your child getting the word. I would say in order for your child to get the word, you, you have to want it too. But that may be a little too shady for you. So I'm just going to stick with the kids and just say, <laughs> we need the kids to come to Bible study so they could be equipped. So when they go into the world, they know how to deal with it. Because they deal with so much. And they need to be confident about what they believe in. Sexuality, uh, being a Christian, it's so much. I'm a middle school teacher. Trust me, I see a lot. Whoa. And I deal with a lot with the kids. And I have to pray with them for on the side, like, just come to my room right quick. And, you know, it's just a lot that they're dealing with. But the, our kids are special. They, that's why we call them the remnant. They're special. And we praise God for them. All right, do we have some notes? If not, I'm going to keep going. All right, so Ashley um, Minister Lodge has already talked about John 10 and 27, which my sheep knows, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Put who and what in your head, okay? And we'll get to that who and what. Go back to the other slide. So I'll be talking about today, Jesus followers self expire for God's desire. You may want to write that down. Self expire for God's desire. Okay, so first we have to look at what is follower. She kind of alluded to it. I'm going to go deep into the definition. To, to pursue or run after, what? To cl cling or overtake to imitate, strive for, attend to. Those words, pursue, run after, cling, overtake, imitate, strive, attend to. I want you to ask yourself these questions. Go to the next one for me. Self-assessment as we do at work all the time. <laughs> Who are you pursuing or running after? I want you to ask yourself. Who's taking over your life? Who are you striving for? Who's holding your greatest attention? And who are you imitating? Most of the time, we don't understand the who and sometimes the what. But we know our selfish why. Selfish why may be to get money. Selfish may be to do this or that. We understand that, but being or becoming a Jesus follower is important that you know your who. Our who is Jesus Christ. Somebody say, my who is Jesus Christ. And what he's called me to do. Say, and what he's called me to, be, to do. In the Bible, when you think about great people that follow Jesus or who we call Jesus followers, you think about the 12 disciples. In particular, Peter, Andrew, James, John, Matthew. The Bible didn't necessarily give history in the gospel of the other seven, but one thing we know they had in common is that was no hesitation to the call. I'll let that sit for a second. There were no, I'm going somewhere, there were no hesitation to the call. Jesus, uh, when Jesus called, they knew that there was no more time for self-desire. Okay. Let's look at Peter and Andrew, Matthew 4 and 18. Jesus saw, okay. 
Jesus saw, Jesus, and Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net unto the sea, for they were fishers. 19 says, and he saith unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. When you look at straightway, it means to do it immediately without delay or hesitation. It means at once. They changed their who and what. Okay? Go to James and John. James and John in Matthew 4 and 21. At that same shore, he saw James and John sitting at sitting with their father um, on the boat with Zebedee and John and his brother and where am I? Okay, son of uh, Zebedee and John, his brother in a ship with Zebedee, their father mending their nets and he called them and they immediately left the ship and their father and follow him. They change their who and what. Leaving the boat, what they were doing, and their father, who they were with, behind. They just left it. It was something about Jesus that made them just stop what they was doing. Heard the voice and start following him. I, I check out Matthew, which is checking out some disciples. It didn't take them long. Matthew, same place as Jesus was walking. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto them, follow me. What happened after that? And he arose immediately and followed him. I don't know if you sense it in the spirit. As soon as we call it, the youth are going to eat. I, I feel in the spirit at the end. It's going to be a, a immediately called. If you pray now, it'll happen. Matthew changed his who and his what. They changed their who and what with no hesitation. Questions to you. What's your hesitation? What's causing you when Jesus called? There's a he hesitation. It's the hesitation. Why? Why me? Are you not confident in it? Or you just, you, you rather do what you're doing. I'm talking to you and grown folks. We can get in there too. I think because we know it's going to cost us for it. That's the one we don't want to talk about. The cost of the call. That, that'll preach by itself. <laughs> I didn't put this in there, but I want to slide in this. If I had a slide, my next slide would be, we have a, a, a demonstrator every week. I don't necessarily have, to, necessarily have to, I wish I had his resume. I don't necessarily have to call on James, John, Peter, Andrew, and Matthew. I could, I could just call on Steve Green. He taught, I mean, as soon as I was reading this, I actually thought about you, sir. The person that was going to college and God made, made an immediate call to you and said, go with me now. And you moved immediately. And sir, I ain't gonna wait till the end. I thank you for it because I wouldn't be standing here right now if you did not hear the call. You would not be sitting there now getting the revelation. If he decided to go to college, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. Where will you be? Just I thought I'll just talk about that. So thank you, sir, for that. I want to look at my subtopic: self-aspire for God's desire. The part of following Christ, saying we looked at men that made that 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 radical move without even thinking about it. But I also want to deal with us: the part where we kind of shake in. The part in following Christ seemed to be difficult in the lives of you. That is leaving their own self-desire on the table like the disciples. 
we have a world of you parents, people in general that don't trust God enough with their lives. They rather, watch this, they rather for their desiring life to be great in their eyes and in the eyes of their followers. Minister Ashton just talked about social media, how we don't mind saying, I reached 10,000 people. I now have, I know some of you saying it. I now have 10,000 followers. For what and who? What's the cause? What's the cause of it? Research says this. Go to that research. I'm sorry, it's little. It's no secret that many businesses and influencers are locked in a race to achieve the highest follower count. This fixation often stems from the idea that a large following equals credibility and influence, fueled by the simplicity of comparing numbers. Unfortunately, some of y'all want to see this, these activities can become addictive as users continuously strive for more likes and followers, resulting in negative mental health effects, effects such as anxiety, depression, and low self-esteem. This hype allows the number of social media followers to determine who's relevant or poppy, which turns into self-desire addiction if you're not careful. I'll let that sink in. I read that and I had to check myself because I'm a musician that we thrive, do we not? On who's following us? And I had to ask myself, for oh, what? What heaven that gonna get me in? <laughs> if I'm not careful, if, not, if I'm not careful, it may send me to hell. If I'm not careful. But you have to remember that life doesn't have this. The one you have to remember that life doesn't have a self-desiring number on it. I'll read that again. You have to remember that life doesn't have a self-desiring number on it, but it does have an expiring number. You can say all day I'm going to live to 100. You don't know that. But one thing we know it has, it does have an expired number. We all will have an expired number. We all have to leave this earth. What will you leave this earth doing? What? or representing who. We only think about that when we see somebody right there. But we never think about that when we're working or just going through our day. Not knowing one day. It, didn't ha it don't have an age on it. Youth. You could die at 10. I'm not saying, I ain't saying I'm cursing you or anything, but it's the real world. So I'm challenging everybody here. It's time to step up. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to step up. It's no time to, to delay. It's time to get in pocket. I'm talking to you at home. You at home for what? I wasn't even supposed to go there. Why are you at home? Closer. There's work here to be done. You should be fed. I get it. It's not like the atmosphere. I know you're comfortable. But you know where you're supposed to be. Get here next Sunday. We start at 10. <laughs> I promise you I didn't write that down. <laughs> Y'all, I'm in another place. I, maybe this was for me. I, I, it's more for me to do. <laughs> I don't have no time to waste. If God take me now, I'm good. Because I'm, I'm going to do everything he called me to be. I used, to, I used to question God why I have so many talents. I don't care. I get it. <laughs> I, I use all of me. All of me. But I, am I still good, Pastor? I'm good. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> so let's get to the expiring. And she, she alluded to it, and I was like, I'm going to get you more. <laughs> Man, this is the part we don't like. Matthew 16, 24 through 27. I just feel like you being dramatic. You want to be dramatic for me? You. Oh, you dramatic enough. 
Hey, son, I got Matthew 16, 24 and 27. What verse do you want? 24 through okay. 27. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Let me look at uh, um, the amplifier. It says, then Jesus said unto his disciples, if anyone wishes, that, that means it has to be a desire for you to do it. Wish to follow me. Watch this. Ask my disciple. He must deny himself. This the part. Set aside selfish interests and take up his cross expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come. And follow me. I don't have to preach this. It's actually preaching by itself. Believing in me, conforming to my example in living and if need be. Listen, you, we don't, we don't talk about this enough. Suffering. You may not have to talk to friends no more after this one. Sorry. Suffering or behalf dying because of the faith in me. For whosoever wishes to save his life in this world I just said this world will dissolve will eventually lose it through death but whosoever loses his life in this world for my sake Jesus that's your who will find it that is life with me for all eternity for, for what will it profit a man if he gained the whole world watch this wealth fame, success, but forfeit his soul. Don't forfeit your soul for all that stuff you want to do. Or what would a man give in exchange for his soul? For the son of man is going to come in the glory and majesty of his, of his father with his angels. I'm getting an amen. It's tearing me up too. I love it. Then he will repay each one in accordance with what he has done. I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, there are some of those standing here who would not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. You would not taste death. You would not taste. It won't even be a desire in your tongue, your palate. You would not, I'm looking at you, you would not take, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm talking to them now. You would not taste death at all. Somebody repeat that. They would not taste death at all. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus, I'm, I'm still there. In Jesus' name. I'm not caught with words. I'm just, I'm just manifesting in my soul. I do this, I'm sorry, I do this with the youth. I say something, I just stand there. That's a say law moment. I just, I would just stand there. They know it. I would just stand there. Robot shit that they will call shot. Yeah, bye bye shot. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Robo call shot. In Jesus' name. 
Jesus, 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 Jesus. They will not taste death. It's round 13, six, I'm, I'm done. I don't want to. <laughs> I was going to talk about the benefits of um, having new life. That's one. Having new life is one. Um, giving your skill, having purpose for skill, that was two. Loving God and loving others, that was it. I'm stuck at they would not taste death for a reason listen to me between third it's amazing when they're young they're so pure <laughs> they're so pure it's just they just want to imitate they know what they're imitating right they just go on with the emotions and you go on with it whatever you do they're they're going to do and then around 13 <laughs> man youth youth ministry is hard sometimes it just you deal with all these emotions and every every year I want to quit I'll, I'll tell you the truth every year part of me want to do something else I'm like, no, I've been doing this I'm 40 years old I don't want to do this no more but it's not an age thing I, I get it I get it um, but every year it's so much that they deal with and you got to know you gotta understand different personalities up and down they like you today they don't like you tomorrow children oh, they're gonna always love you <laughs> but you you just don't know not i mean we got great youth here that's not what i'm going with it but they're dealing with so much from 13 to 18 years old and if we don't cover these kids and and teach them how to follow christ that's why i'm so adamant i want y'all to praise but i want you to listen to and there's so many of us here not putting our kids in positions to hear God and to learn of God and even in their own church you know you're not doing it you're not doing it at home so the least you could do talking out my heart I gave you the word of God I'm, I, should, I hope it was great but I want you to hear my heart now and pastor if you can pray for all the youth and when pastor comes up he's going to call you immediately and I'm sure Pastor's going to do it his own way, and I hope he do it aggressively, because as soon as he call you, I want you to come down here. But I want you to hear my heart, people of God. It's been years. I've talked to parents, and they say, oh, my child is busy. Busy to get a word? Busy to learn about Jesus? What you come to church for? That's, that's what it's about. It's about expressing your love to God. That's one. But Bible study is about them getting equipped. They could do math, science, social study. They're killing that. You talking about A honorable people, but they don't know no word. And you put them in danger, dangerous places because the devil don't play fair. He's not playing fair. You're just sending them to school. And you think it's all right because you you full of God and you pray. But all them demons they dealing with, you don't know about. And some I know about them more than you do. So the least you could do is bring them to Bible study. Bring them and get involved with the youth. The people like them. <laughs> the remnant. I hope you hear me really good. It's going to be important in times to come because the devil is he's only going to get stronger he's going to try to get stronger but we are saying right now I kept saying all day today no weapon form and guess what and this is why we want to equip your kids no weapon formed that means it's coming at them but will they be equipped to handle them when it comes this is what youth church is about youth group to equip them to stand against the enemy no weapon formed against them shall prosper and we believe that in Jesus name amen
I want to start where the oil flows from the head. There is a transitioning. I understand the youth that's obedience, but the the prophet, the, the prophetic seer that you the seer of this generation. But you will always have the strength of a teenager. You will always have the mind and the, the prism and the insight for the generation. For God has strategically placed you in the field of music. Not to muse. Amusement means not to think but muse means to think God called you in those many gifts as you ask because you are thinker because he's thinking about you it's because he's mindful of you Oh, as you began to understand the order that was taught and you began to make impartations of new life to the baby boomers and the generation Zers and the servants and all those that shall come. You made an impartation, a threefold generation of the God of the ancient of days, uh, from the God that was to the God that is to the God that is to come and there will be and exchange what does it profit a man to gain the world in exchange for his soul and God says because I trust you you have been able to go in among the world but you didn't exchange it your soul you did not give them your soul there's a part of you that's been unscathed untouched by the enemy and it is your mind that's why he has you in the educational field and in the music field, there will be two of the greatest weapons that will be against the anointing of God. It will be those areas that the Antichrist would love to take over. The field of knowledge and the field of music. But may God begin to download a fresh anointing on you. Because you would not just teach band in schools, you will raise up bands in the name of Jesus. God's going to put you in a position, I see a council, uh, where you will oversee, they will call for you for counsel, for secular bands, for music bands, uh, for wedding bands. Uh. Oh, somebody need to help me praise God right here. There's something, there's something, I know it when I see it. When I came along in college, there was nobody to say to me what I'm saying over you. You get it. You see it. You understand it. Uh, that that which is belongs unto you're the render unto Caesar that which is unto Caesar but you're the render unto God get ready you I'm getting ready to release the testator over you uh, you get ready to taste something you've never seen your taste buds are getting ready to change uh, your appetite is getting ready to change uh, the testator is in the house uh, the testator is in the house oh my god I need somebody just begin to praise him uh, begin to praise him but come on something 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 you represent in order there's a gap there's a gap like with you and Walter there's a gap between the baby boomers and the generation H, uh, 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 X and the generation Z years up uh, and he's down you would not have Alzheimer's disease in Jesus your mind your mind your mind will be stayed on him therefore it would not matter that's where no matter where you go you always thinking about him you'll know when you call when you can't get your mind off God the anointing of your father come on give me a little monitor here please work with me work with me and my monitor give me come on come on yes please thank you come on come on with it yes 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 thank you much I need that uh, yes yes part of what I transfer over you yes that's where I need to be what I transfer over you uh, it's not that when I stepped out of college but every since I've been out of college I made some fleshly mistakes but I cannot get my mind off God uh, if I'm in a 
sporting event, I cannot get my mind off God. Uh, if I've been in bad situations, I cannot get my mind off God. Uh, I pray that no matter wherever you go, God will order your steps and your mind will be inundated and bombarded with God. Uh, I make a transfer uh, that you will be called for the remnant. Uh, yes, I was called in the days ahead uh, for the multitude. You will do more than with 10 than I did with 10,000. Uh, come on, somebody give God a praise right now. It's the remnant. It's the remain. Who is left that's showing in his glory? Uh, see, this generation is about the numbers, uh, but it ain't about the number. Uh, it's about the power. It was a remnant of disciples, uh, and you went through every one of them. You went through Matthew. You went through James. Uh, you went through John because when all the others had turned away, there was a remnant. There was a remnant. Uh, there was a Peter that made high. I feel the anointing of God. You've been preserved for the remnant, sir. Uh, it won't be the mega. Uh, you understand it. Uh, and I pray God for a fresh anointing. Uh, starting with you. Come on, Luca. Uh, I want to begin to anoint him now. Uh, oh, Luca. Da, 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 oh, God, uh, I'm going to need somebody not to spectate now. Even if you don't stand. You, we don't understand the spectrum. Uh, but God told me this. Uh, I had a prophet came to me when we built this building. He said, the world don't know who you are locally. But I'm going to send you around the world before Birmingham understands who you are. Uh, because a prophet is without honor. Sometimes in his own country. And God says, I've allowed you to see the world. So when you get ready to download, uh, you're in a capital place. Uh, a Washington place. Uh, you're in a place of Washington. Not Washington, D.C. You're in a Washington where you wash the, where you wash a generation up. Oh, is anybody going to help me here? God's raised up a prophet in your own midst. You better give God a praise here. God said over in Acts chapter 13, he spake of one day David, uh, a prophet, uh, that will fulfill all my program. It's in Acts 13 somewhere where he says, I will anoint him for he will carry out all of my program. Uh, I see the Board of Education uh, making an appointment. You better get ready because you're going to be asked to do something higher than what you are. I know what I'm seeing here, but I see you like a Judah over the whole region. Uh, there are some places where you're going to be able to all the bands. Uh, there is an assignment. Uh, is anybody going to help me here? You don't have to be the, the largest. He'll just make you the king. Somebody give God a kingly anointing. And if there's a king anointing on you, then there's a king of the kings. Uh, that means there are followers coming. Uh, but just as Jesus did with that remnant, Peter, James, and John, they got up in that upper room, and they say these men have come here up, have turned the world upside down. Uh, will you please give God a praise right now? In Jesus' name, he's a, he's a high fixer. Will somebody give my prayer song? He's a mind that's a prayer mantle. That's why when you get it going, you can't help it. You'll never be able to finish a message. Uh, you're educated. You pontificated. The teacher's anointing. But sir, your strongest anointing is not teacher. That was teaching at his best. Uh, what you did not know, uh, that that was one of the scriptures that God told me to lock in for the youth. That I was preaching in the days to come. You did not know that because there is no greater scripture than when a man lose his own interest. Uh, it won't be about the interest rates. Uh, it won't be about who's interested in you. Uh, it's about God interest in the name of Jesus. Interest, interest. Uh, I-N-T-E, interest. Interest. You're about to enter into the rest of God. Uh, not heaven, the rest of what God has. Uh, well, somebody as I lay my hands on you. Did we find that ax for me? Amplified. Hold on one second. We'll wait on all the frequencies to get out of the way. What does it say? And when he had disposed him, he raised up David to be their king, of whom he bore witness and said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart 
who will do all of my will and carry out my program oh my God. fully. He will do all my will and he will carry out my program. But it won't be just another program. Pro meetings for and weighty. Graham means weight. We've had enough programs and our programs are not changing our children. Graham means weight. The weight of glory is about to increase on your life to such a degree. It's going to almost be scary. I've seen this before. So I lay my hands and I, I lay the prayer mantle. There are a lot of things I've not been able to perfect, but I got that prayer thing down. And may God give you a double portion of the oil and prayer that will cause you to see I first lay my hand. They brought the apostolic prayer shawl. See that? They brought the oraka, the, the apostle. That means something is generationally groundbreaking. I drape you, sir. the suffering crucified laid behind the soul live to die rejecting and alone like a rose trample I would call the youth out by name, but I had to call him by name first, right? Hmm. Jesus saw his disciples. He said, follow me. Follow me. Follow the path of apostolic order. Follow me, David. And immediately. Like a road. on the ground I'm not saying you're abound don't, don't, don't mishear what I'm saying I'm saying there's a similar purity there's a similar purity even the way your words come out sometimes it's not arrogance it's a very similar purity you're going to carry out God's program. The reason I've been able to exist for 42 years because I've been carried out no church program. I'm not here to carry out what time we get out of church. I'm not after a church program. I'm not after a welfare program. I'm not after a building program. God says, son, I raise you up to carry out my program. And it'll cost you some people to walk away from you. That's what I'm saying is on you, follow me. Now, wherever that leads, wherever place and space and assignment, the spirit of that is you will carry out, you will not get caught up in nothing but God's program. We were in transition, making some changes in our music department. And we asked all the seasoned people to make a statement. You made a statement I never shall forget. You say, I don't know everything that's going on. But I do know this. My assignment is to protect the anointing of God. That's all I need to hear. 
Because when you protect the anointing, I got, I've got one assignment. I don't care what people think, uh, Easter egg drops. My, if you want to know what my assignment is, it is to protect the little glory that exists in the earth. I want to make sure I'm one of those anointed cherub that covers. I want to make sure that if he don't get glory out of nowhere else, he going to get it. He going to have his way. I am here to protect the anointed. That's how I know you got my spirit. Because stuff will come. Things will go down. But if you're the anointed one, uh, you will cover and protect the, the program of God. And I think what's been clear to you is that MTC is all about the glory of God and about destiny not that you probably didn't have questions we all do now I want to do what this you gave new meaning to that whole remnant you're absolutely right and your thing was great I was thinking about you I was saying I don't know about that thing but I was in another generation thing you were when, when you got up I said that's what he was talking about that what he talking about. Okay, all right, that's a great topic. I'm sorry, we'll talk about it later, right? You went a whole other track on me, right? But that remnant, anointed remnant, God speaks in the last days. He asked Haggai, who is left that saw it? And how do you see it now? Because while everybody else coming back from exile was concerned about Solomon's temple, if you are stuck in looking for Solomon's temple, you are stuck in the last realm. It says, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former. So that has to be contrast. We have to look at what was and what is. He never promised that the numbers of the, of the latter. He said, the glory is what you're going to look for. It's going to be great. That's why we got in that place a moment ago before you came up that the glory just kept going. It just kept going. Because I've been here all 41 years. And I'm telling you, the anointings that we're operating here, I've not seen it more glorious than what I saw it today and others. And you understand that. But yet at the same time, I know how to orchestrate it enough to bring the spirit and truth that we needed to hear from both you and Ashley. And if there's, and we saw some of that on that step, if there's one Steve Green or David Smith in that group, I wasn't raised in a bougie church, but I was paying attention. And you got some of those that's under your tutelage. Let me do this as that, that point that you had with the, the tasting of death. I want to pray for the younger ones that are here. And I almost feel like I need to cover the children that are still here too. Go ahead and get your tithes and offerings ready. Now, you, you, you ended on something, and I heard three words on it about tasting death. That is one of my most favorite passages actually in Matthew 16 Jesus gives Peter the keys of the kingdom who do men say that I am Psalm say Psalms then he asked Peter who do you say Peter got it right then Jesus told him what he was getting ready to do to suffer and he said this must never happen I want you to look at somebody and say whatever the devil said must never happen to you and for you is getting ready to happen starting right now Peter took Jesus, the Amplified Bible says, round 23, and said to him and rebuked Jesus sharply, the Amplified, and said, this must never happen to you. But what Jesus did was he took, because there are people, I have to watch this, there are things God's telling me to do, and I got people all around phases and telling me what they think it ought to be. Oh, we can't do it this way. I can't let people that's on a lower level, I don't get my orders from the, it flows down. This must never happen. He began to rebuke Jesus sharply. And you know what Jesus said? Get thee behind me, Satan, for you are an offense to me. You do not have, here comes this taste. I want you to hear me. The Lord told me that when I get through praying for those that are here in youth today, you will no longer have the taste for any abusive substance. He's going to taste, he's going to take the taste of drugs, weeds, 
out of your mouth. And somebody said, oh, no, 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 I'm not, don't get mad. I ain't talking about your little dinner wine. Some of y'all are too spiritual. You saying I can't have a little dinner? No, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying at all. But some of you are too close to being addictive to it. And the Lord, as he was saying, he's going to take that taste of death out of your mouth. A prophet sometimes, most of them cannot give what he does not have. There are a lot of things I have not conquered. But I have absolutely no desire and never have for wine, drinking, wheat, none of that. I'm going to release my hands on you and it's going to kill every germ in your body. It's going to take the taste of death out of your mouth. Because I don't know which one of them it is, but it's one of you. The enemy intends to overdose. But the Lord told me he's going he's to take that out of your mouth because you have taken it too far. That you're on a path. It just looked like it's just social right now. But I, he's, I'm going to take... The taste of death. Now, uh, you, <laughs> Psalm 34, just follow me. And I'm going to need Hebrews 9 because I'm just getting this by what, what David said here. I know it's there. I just got to listen to my mind of minds. Psalm 34 says part of your praise is that you are to taste and see that the Lord is good. You're about to taste and see of God's goodness. And when you lose that taste, something good is getting ready to happen to you. Psalm 34. Somebody give God a praise for a new taste. In other words... Some of your children, they won't even have the same taste for food at restaurants. Their, their whole quality is getting ready to change. Uh, that's why they don't want to shop, go, nor do what you want to do. You went to Six Flags, they want to go to Mexico because God is changing their taste. Come on. But the most important taste bud God's got to do is he got to change their taste for him. They have a taste for everything else. They have great social taste, clothing taste, but they do not have a taste for him. I want you to give God a praise right now that the hunger in our children you ever heard people say man I got a taste for some chicken I got a taste for some apple pie I got a taste for everything or some people actually have just great taste in clothing and furniture but I'm going to tell you what they're falling short they do not have a taste for the things of God they can do those other things every day they can eat every day they can go shop Target they can go to Walmart come on somebody they, they can go to ice cream every day. They, go, they got a taste. God's going to take that taste out of their mouth. Hebrews 9 says, I don't know, around verse 22, some, that, that must first be 16, the death of a testator. You'll see the word testator. It'd be about 9, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 16, yes. 16 what does it say for where is a testament is wherever there's a testament there must a, also of there necessity must of necessity be what be the death the of death. the testator now somebody got the the death of the what testator he tasted death for you so you wouldn't die he does not have a taste for death anymore he hates death he lost his appetite for death. He only has a taste for life. Will you please give God a praise right now that none of our children will have a test, a taste for death. They will not be depressed. They will not commit suicide. Will you give God a praise that God's changing their taste? They will not have a taste for being in a gang. They will not have a taste for drugs. They will not have a taste for drop house. Will you please give God a praise that God, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. This is what you told me to call them to do. Change their taste. For blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be filled. Yes. Now here's one more scripture. Because they all came before me. Look like it's all in Hebrews. Chapter 6. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's okay. Okay, this. <laughs> Hebrews he said 6 it's going to affect everything from the babes to the elementary students and it will end taking them to the highest college which is tasting of the powers of the world to come now I won't have time to go there but hang with me parents it's youth week Hebrews 6 says therefore leaving 
the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Can you look at the amplified of that verse, right? Yes, sir. Therefore, let us go on and get past the elementary stage. Oh, wait a minute. What now? The elementary. The Lord told me a moment ago that there are those that are yet in elementary school that the devil's trying to set them up before they get to middle school. But we're going to break those tastes that the enemy's trying to set them up even while they're in the elementary school so that he got them doing things so they can't go on to perfection but let us go on from dead works and repentance and faith toward God I didn't do the preaching I asked the two of them to do the preaching I said leave me about 30 minutes on the back end leaving the elementary the elements let us go on around verse 7 it says having tasted matter of fact it's going to it should in King James it's probably going to say the word taste twice around verse 7 and 9. You should see the word taste twice in that passage. If my mind serves me right. You see the word taste around 5 and around verse 7 through 9. I okay, think yes. taste is in there twice. Yes, 4, 5, yes sir. What, what does 4 say? For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift. Wait a minute. See that gift that just came before us? That's a heavenly gift. You don't talk like that when you're from the hood. They just ain't off a heavenly gift. Will somebody give God a praise for heavenly gifts? That is not a seminarian trained gift. That, see, the problem is we don't know heavenly gifts when we see them. I'm like, I'm, I'm try this one more time. Will you give God a praise for these two heavenly gifts? I'm going to try it. That's what, uh, that's what we see. Whitney talking about temple babies. Will you give God a praise for heavenly gifts, Ashley and David? Will you please thank God? You ain't got time to teach them. You don't have time to train them. Will you thank God for these heavenly gifts? What does it say now? And were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. These heavenly gifts made you partakers of what? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Verse 5. And have tasted the good word of God. Wait a minute. Here come this taste thing. And have tasted. Now this is what I used to tell people that that think a word is a word anywhere you go. Any of y'all ever been on drugs before and heard of a drug that's a good drug and that's a bad drug? There was a good word and there's a bad word. Ashley say there are good principles where you can be misled. You can get under the wrong word and you, it'll kill you like bad drugs will. You can get under the wrong person's fellowship and it will kill you as quickly. What's this new drug they got fed and what is it called? Uh, Fentanyl. The new fentanyl right now is religion and misleading. You get under the wrong click, it'll take you, wrong gang leader, it'll take you straight to where to, to hell. Keep going. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to Let's come. Stop right there. Wait a minute. I'm going to need you to not downplay Somebody thank God, whether Pastor Green gets up, whether Elder Thompson wax eloquent about assembly, that only kind of word you get is a good word. Every time we feed you, it will be with the good word of God. This is why Ashley was talking about he being one teacher after other being mis misled. Uh, well, let's give God praise for stability of our generation. They're not schizophrenic and all over the place. Come on, what a word from God. Having itching ears. This week it's Pastor Green. Next week it's social media. They're all over the place. Somebody thank God for the good word. Because here's what good words do. Taste it of the good word and what? And the powers of the world to come. Okay, now that's what we're going to have to lay hands. And have tasted of the powers of what now? Third world countries? You must not have understood what we just said. That word that he just preached to you is better than third world, American world. It's a power that UAB hadn't even tapped into yet. You are about to tap into a power that's beyond science. He's been given a name that's above every name, not only in this world, but the world to come. I'm going to need some adult right now that the devil has turned your world upside down and there's no doctor or lawyer in this world has the answer for your deliverance. I'll be preaching on the healing night um, about the longevity sickness. Is it permanent? 
sickness is it do you have to accept it or acknowledge it but the Lord told me to tell you there is no sickness that's permanent in your life when 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 a prognosis uh, meet a diagnosis called Jesus the prognosis that says 70 more years has to bow his knees I don't care how long you had that the power of the world of God is about to change what you thought you had to suffer for the rest of your life if you begin to praise him it'll start healing your body right now it'll start healing your body it will heal your joy right now it will give you fresh insulin in your body right now. It will heal your freaking choice right now. If you'll follow me, if you follow the word of God like you followed your doctor's order. We get in a zone where we were before I brought Ashley and David up. The power was so thick in here. That's medicinal. Do you know how many people was getting healed by that glory? When the power of the world to come? I'm gonna, I can't duplicate that right now. But can you retroactively go back about an hour ago when the power of God invaded this place and you tasted of it? You cannot enforce the New Testament will until there is first the death of a testator if you never read Hebrews 9 you need to and Jesus I think the other Bible says it cannot be enforced it cannot be enforced somewhere maybe another verse it cannot God's about to enforce some stuff out of your life he's about to enforce sickness and bad drugs out of your life if you can't it's down in one of the verses about some has to be forced when God get ready, he's going to do it with force. Let me lay hands now. Hallelujah. 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 Here's what I want to happen. David. I'm going to lay my hands on you. I want you to lay your hands. Give me some more. Power in your hands. No matter whether you're on a cruise, in a school, or in a church, whatever you set your hands to do, shall prosper. on you if you lay hands on the God's gonna be removing taste you see will the rest of you begin to worship will you begin to worship right now you have no taste for rebellion you have no taste for the grave They will not even have a taste for death. When things go wrong, they won't have a taste to want to die. They won't even have a taste to want to quit. From elementary all the way up. He's won it all. Hold you down. No, no, no. Can't hold you down. You are the risen. You're the risen key. See that. You are. You are. Somebody thank God that they will operate in the powers of the world to come. See this whole generation, if you watch the cartoons, everything is always about, I want to be a superpower. I want to be a super, everything is about super characters. Why isn't it 
why is it that Disney and some of the other stations and characters that our children are more impressed with the superheroes that they're not infatuated with Peter, James, and John? Why isn't it that they don't know that the real power? You know why? Because our churches have had a form of godliness and denied the power. Ain't no power in our churches. But God, give us the power. Raise up these prophets and teachers and scientists and doctors and lawyers. We will not have a form of godliness. I ask you to go back and view throne room that night I talked on Daniel Shadrach. The Bible said in Abednego, those three boys, the king had astrologers and scientists, but nobody in that realm was able to solve this problem because they dealt in magic. They were dealing in power, but the wrong kind of power. But the power of God is about to invade our children. There's no need of me laying hands on them. Come on, this thing is tra it's transferred generationally. We're stirring up gifts now. A lot of our children are on spring break. I get that. I understand a lot of families, they're not out of order. But, but we stand in the gap for those that are not here. Will you give God a praise even for those that are not here? See that? Will you put your hands together one final time and thank God that the power of death not only are we we're past talking about if they're gonna die David wrote they will have no taste for death at all not until they see the Lord coming in all of his glory that is my prayer for them that's what we're asking God to do. If you've been blessed by the ministry of our whole children's department and youth, why don't you give the Lord a hand of praise for it? Oh, yeah, I hear you. Why don't you just give God a hand for the taste? What a great testimony for your children and grandchildren would change their taste. Some of the people that we think have good taste don't. I'll end with the that Matthew 16, and I'm through with it. I don't want to preach on top of it. But it says, you do not have a savor. And it says, you have a taste for the quality of men, but not of God. It's around verse 24. It says, you have a Matthew 16. You have an amplified Bible. It says, you savor the things that be of men, but you do not have a savor for the things that be of God. This is what we're up against. Have we found that? Do we have, can we get a mic? Somebody, I want us to see this right before we go. Tell somebody your quality is about to change. We don't just need a quantitative analysis. We need a qualitative analysis. What we thought was good in quantity has not been good in, in quality. Have we found that? That mic, we'll just wait. We'll cut that on. Yes, sir, verse 28. Is that 28 that says the quality of men? I want to make sure it's the right verse. Okay, yes, sir. Seemed like it's down a little bit before then. Savor of the things of God. I may be wrong. It's an amplified Bible. Everybody can look together with a whole church. You ain't got to wonder if she's going to find it. You, you, you should be reading your Bible too. This service ain't over. You 
You savor the things that be of men, but not have a savor the things that be of God. Amplified going to says, you have a taste for the quality of men, but not of God. That's Matthew 16. Maybe I'm wrong in it, but I don't think so. It's 20 what? 23, 23, 23. Thank you. Yes, I, you know. Listen, guys, I, I don't know the whole Bible, but I kind of got a, a good feel of where some verses are. And that 28 is about to go into, that was too far up. And uh, no disrespect to those that put on the spot, but just tell somebody, you're not going to be able to just tell me no anything. Uh, not them, I'm just saying, I'm at a place, I don't just go on because somebody said it. I have to go with what I'm seeing. What does it say? Yes, Matthew 16, verse 23. Read King James for me. Yes, sir. King James reads, But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art offense unto you me. You are an offense to me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God. You don't have a taste for, you don't have a God taste. But you, those, sorry about that. Please get Yes, sir. But those that be of men. Read the Amplified. Yes, sir. But Jesus turned away from Peter and said to him, Get behind me, Satan. How many of you know sometimes you got to tell some people, You can't follow me no more. You can't walk with me because our quality is not the same anymore. How many of you know that you can start out with a group of people wanting what you want, but all of a sudden your quality change? You'll lose some people if your quality change. I promise you that. What does it say? You are in my way. You're in my way. You are a hindrance, I think. Yes, an offense and a hindrance and a snare to me. You are a offense, a hindrance, and a snare. To me. For you are minding what partakes not of the nature, natural, and, excuse me, of the, let me read that one more time, sir. For you are a... For you are minding what partakes not of the nature and quality of God. Wait a minute. Quality of God. The quality of God. You're not minding the things that are part of the quality and the nature of the quality of God. But of men. Of men. Is that the end? Verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to be my disciple. That's what David picked up at. Will you lift your hand right now and thank God right now, parents. We want God to change the taste that's bad taste in our children's mouth. But I dare you to open up your mouth and say, God, if I'm tasting for the wrong things, you need to change my taste right now because otherwise you are going to be a hindrance to God. I'm watching a whole generation that does not have a taste for God. They got taste for clubs. Let me go. I'll get into it this week. When Jesus was arrested, they came to him with swords and staves. I said, what is a stave? They had swords and they had clubs. There are two things that will arrest Jesus and shackle him. And that's a sword in your hand to fight in the flesh and a stave or a club. It was like a billy club, in other words, or you can have be with the wrong club. If you are in the wrong club that's got the wrong taste, it will kill your taste for God. I dare you to read it. I'm going to deal with the men. Swords and staves. Swords and staves. Stave is a club. When you're hanging out, what Judas did was mess around and got in the wrong club with the Pharisees and sold out on Jesus. And he never hit Jesus one time. As a matter of fact, he kissed him, didn't he? Somebody give the Lord a hand of praise right now that we will have the right taste. I, I know that. I, that's all right. Why, why don't you? No. Will you give God a hand right now that you'll have the taste for the right leadership, for the right word, for the right kind of service? And all the people said, amen. What a service this has been. We've been here. Let's give God a hand of praise for all that has taken place today. It's been awesome.
with our children. It's, I know it seemed like eternities ago, but let's thank God for our children. SOS, save our speeches. Let's give God a praise for what happened with Gerard and Shirley writing that speech. And Miss Hattie, come on, let's thank God. Man, it's been awesome. And then to back it up, here come Minister Ashley. Come on, somebody. And Minister David. And somewhere in there, we had a download of praise that we thought we weren't going to make it to neither one of them. Man, we are on our way to Holy Week. Let's give God a praise. All right, we're getting ready to close. Get an offering in your hand. Get your tithes in your hand. Those of you that's not here, I know some of you checking in from wherever you are on your vacation just to see what we're doing. Well, while you're there, don't, don't let Santa Claus nor Palm Beach spend all your money. <laughs> Bring the tithe into the storehouse. Let's honor the Lord in order to do what we do. I shouldn't have to tell you. It's tax season. Some of you are giving stuff toward the equipment. Some of you walked up and saw the beautiful the, um, landscape. Mulch is fresh. We keep our grounds there holy. That costs us to do that. You know that. Some of you got, you know, to keep the house of God looking beautiful. Thank you for sowing into that. Amen. When the youth go, we try to peel off a little bit to them, a little bit to the men, a little bit to the women. Amen. So to God be the glory. So thank you for cooperating. Tithes, offerings my share in the kingdom thank you so all right david anything y'all want to say boy that was good anything else you want to say you look like you wanted to say something else i don't know you you just had that look like you wanted to say something else i want to thank my wife yeah, you're wise for that <laughs> you, better, you want to go home yeah i gotta go home no um my daughter she has surgery friday so that's not that's why she's not here so I wanted to make and she sure. often checks in by the way to me yes she does yes, I want to let yes. they don't know that yes, but I know that know, you right. know that yeah, we're, yeah so we're, it ain't their business we're right? happy okay all right good <laughs> no um we're excited about the trip that's happening you make some noise yeah that's gonna be fun um but they said two o'clock and you should get a itinerary of everything that's happening that's all thank, thank you, you for taking care of our sheep man yes. you know what I'm saying it just means give it up a lot. for pastor too wonderful word I'm all right yeah, give I'm it up a, to him Amen. That's good. Now that Matthew 16, 24. That's the one. Let's stand our feet, guys. Uh, let you go home. Uh, hey, this is now. Um, let me remind you. I, I know you already know. You do know. Hear me. I ain't trying to rebuke, man. I just want you to hear me. Bring the music down just a little bit. I do want you to hear me, though. You do know that this week is not called in the spirit realm spring week. You do know in the spirit realm it's called Holy Week. You do know that, don't you? Uh, I'm, I'm, don't get mad at me. I'm just a mailman. It don't always fall that way. Holy Week sometimes in April, but I'm just helping you. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just trying to tell you. You do know that this week is not your week. You do know that, don't you? Ain't nobody saying that. If people looking at me like, Negro, you crazy. I'm about to go where I need to go. I'm, I'm just saying. May God give you the grace, but I want to tell you this is a Holy Week. It's not just a holy day. If Jesus could take a whole week to die for you, you can't take a whole week to live for him. Amen. Just to live for him. Just in one week. is the only week it's called Holy Week. This is the week. And I pray that you will teach your children the importance of that week. You are not cursed if you don't. I have to always give that disclaimer because people, they got some vacation stuff. We finally began to I'm just saying, but don't get mad at everybody else because we treating it like it's a holy week. Monday with the men, Tuesday with the women. If you ain't out of town, you need to be in the house of God, man. Wednesday with the healing. Good Friday. Amen. We're celebrating and God has hired me I hate to use that word to make sure that you never lose sight of that. That you don't because that's the only reason you're really alive. And if you are tired of celebrating him, he can, he can get you out of his realm. He can solve that real quickly. I ain't trying to scare you. I'm just trying to tell you. So we started off beautifully yesterday. We saw the God of Elijah Man, I'll rock with y'all anyway. Man, y'all got there, Elder Thompson, Cheryl, and it was rain, looked like it was going. You know how the devil fight our respect rallies? And somewhere around 9 o'clock, even when I headed over to the, it was, 
rain and I'm saying, oh my God, I told them, y'all be thinking I'm full of faith all the time. I called Cheryl and Elder Thompson. I said, I think my plan B is about to kick in. I said, I looked at the weather on Good Friday and we're going to move this one to Good Friday. Elder Thompson, God bless you, said, oh no, I'm here. I done checked out the grounds. The grounds are dry because uh, the night before they were saying it might be electrical. And they said, we're on the way. The truck already loaded. We ain't been to reload this truck. We headed over there. <laughs> By the time we got there, <laughs> it was a little windy. The sign started peaking. Next thing you know, we had an air conditioned man. And it was on. And I was, the devil said, yeah, you're going to have it. But there ain't but a few people going to show up. Next thing we started looking, they were wrapping all the way around the fence. Somebody thank God. And we preached the flat out gospel. We preach the gospel. Will you give God a praise? I'm talking about what your church is. I mean, are you excited? I mean, sometimes y'all, you, you scare me. You always want me to talk about what other people do. I'm talking about what your church is doing out in the community to make some child know that God loves them. And I even got in a sack race myself. At, at, at uh, 35 years old, I was able to sack race. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, uh, 35 plus. I didn't try to go too far. I just jumped a couple of spots and fell down like it was over. You got to know when to hold them and you got to know when to fold them. Lift your hands. Say, may the Lord watch between us while we're absent one from another. I thank you, Father, for this week that has resurrection qualities in it. I'm expecting anything that tried to die in my life that you did not ordain to die to come back alive during this week. Amen. All right, let's go with some good marching music. Uh, if you'll bring your tithes and your gifts around and uh, we'll see you guys. Men, we'll see you on time. I think we're meeting at 6. Pressure away. Women of God, Y'all need to bring your prayer shawls. Y'all need to be up in here. The Lord's got a word for you on, uh, on uh, Tuesday night. It's supposed to be storming.